Hello and good afternoon. You are watching the Policy Times, world's first policy and development media. That is how we always introduce ourselves since last four and a half years. Policy Times, uh, since the day of inception, has been focusing on one area that is influencing or advocating or making better policy, helping or facilitating making better policy and better implementation. Because we believe that policy is the center of any development or national development agenda. Overall, we want to achieve national growth, national development. India, with its humongous population strength or, or demographic strength, and also uh, enriched with almost poss all possible natural resources, has a lot to offer to the world. India is, as Dr. Shekhar also points it now, uh, and clearly that we are the soft global power of the world. And uh, we have to be the global thinker. And all the program that we do is with an intention to achieve how India can lead or define the global thinking or the global thinking process. Sustainability is definitely the next buzzword. It's already a buzzword and a lot of things to be done. India traditionally, uh, has a lot to offer for a sustainable living, whether it is uh, at the family level, at the organization level, at the uh, you know global uh, policy level. Now, how we can again give or show a new roadmap to the world in terms of a sustainable living will be an interesting perspective to watch. And all the speakers that we have today uh, all belong to that area and are contributing uh, silently uh, vividly, consistently into uh, this sector. Now, plastic policy is one of the most important areas uh, for any nation, as plastic is one of the most used products across uh, you know the line. We cannot live uh, our life even a single day without the plastic use. Whatever we use, there is a, a component of plastic in it. But how, as as Dr. Vasudevan often says, it's actually a blessing. And now how we actually make plastic a blessing in our society and make the best use of it is everything that we are going to discuss. India today also recently has uh, published the second draft. Uh, in fact, the next draft of the EPR implementation policy. So I would request all of our speakers, sh you know, sharing your perspective on that. And we have actually a mix of speakers from different domains. I want to welcome uh, Ms. Saloni Goel, ma'am. Uh, ma'am is the climate change specialist as, at uh, Niti Ayo. And with her, we have uh, Ms. Mrs. Uh, Shalini Goel Valla, who has been, uh, who is the MD at uh, International Council for Circular Economy, has been one of the leading women faces in the field of, you know, circular economy and has, has been contributing tremendously. Uh, with him, we have Michael Rada uh, from Europe doing wonderful work uh, in the field of, you know, Industry 5. He is the founder of Industry 5.0 and has a lot of practices, global best practices to share for sustainable living. From the industry, we have Dr. Bipin Kumar Ray, who is the EHS head at, from the Continental Tower Tires, and uh, Mohammad Shamim Khan, uh, EHS and sustainability head uh, PCPC from one of the leading FMCG companies of India. Uh, with uh, them, we have uh, two eminent uh, recyclers, uh, uh, Mr. Akshay Rath, who is the Chief Executive Officer of EcoX, uh, one of the digital marketplace of uh, all the recyclers and uh, brands. And with him, we have Mr. Devath, a rising entrepreneur, social entrepreneur, Mr. Devath Banerjee. So with all of them, we will discuss today uh, the India's implementation uh, plastic policy roadmap. I will first request Mr. Akshay Rath and Mr. Devath to give two to three minutes uh, brief intro opening remarks or intro remarks to start the program. So, Mr. Akshita. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thanks, uh, Akramji. Uh, nice to meet Salini, Madam, again in the second uh, opportunity for me. And uh, Shekhar, sir. So, uh, based on my understanding of the current uh, EPR framework, which was published on 6th, I found the uh, MOEF has really moved fast. And from March SOP to say October 6th, 
I think within six months, they could come out with a framework which is more industry friendly. There are a couple of things which uh, needs to be noted. The challenges what we had in SOP and how it has overcome in the new policy. The biggest challenge in the SOP was ULB as a driver, but ULB has its own, own priorities. So somehow that was not working. And the getting agreements by your PI PO with uh, hundreds of uh, ULBs is, is something not practically feasible. A, B, how to get endorsements for recyclable plastics? Because if we understand the waste, plastic waste management sector in India, most of the plastic waste, which has got an economical value, it never lands to municipality dumpyard or landfill. It has got a parallel economy of itself. So if something which is not visible to the municipality or ULP, it is very difficult municipality to endorse it. That was another area which is really a great challenge which has uh, been taken care of this. And third is, uh, see, the document which proves that the recycling has been done, the document owner is a recycler. But somehow, for the last four or five years, we had two entities called WMS, Best Management Agencies, or PROs, who were managing the entire flow of activities and helping brands and the ownership somehow was not proven by the recyclers. So now the regulation is very clear that the accountability is lying with the recycler who has to give his returns. First, he has to get registered on the PWM 16, section 133, uh, wherever, whichever states they are in. Second, they have to give an annual return by giving the details on the recycling they have done for respective brands. So this is a really commendable uh, part for a MEF, wherein at least the recyclers are most of them are organized sectors. So anything which is organized, we can always you know, have a checks and balances in place. But if you are looking at waste collectors who are very informal sector, or say ULBs which may not be highly digitized, it is very difficult to really you know, take sort of uh, the situation in terms of monitoring, in terms of visibility, in terms of endorsement. So I believe uh, there are a lot of things which has been uh, addressed by the new policy. Even if there are 60 days of uh, provision wherein uh, the industry can give their feedback, but I really welcome the new EPR framework which was published on 6th. And I believe as a marketplace, I could see that there will be very, very comfortable and seamless transaction can happen from the brand with the recycler community which are onboarded in my portal. I have already 27 recyclers in Pan India and as well as 46 odd recyclers. And I have fortunately three ULPs also. That was a very hard task for me, but I worked that for the last two months. And three ULPs are onboarded who are ready to invoice to brands and fulfill the EPR obligation for brands from their best they are generating from their jurisdiction. So with this, uh, I think uh, I will close uh, by introdu introducing this, uh, uh, discussion and I will uh, be very happy to get insights from the deliberations of uh, our uh, other speakers and uh, I am really uh, very eager to know what Salini Madam has to talk about uh, and what Niti Ayog is talking about when they have new EPR framework. Thank you very much Akbar. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Akshayji. Now I'll request Devartha to give a basic a rising a social entrepreneur. I can see you are in your facility. Uh, also in the operation, it's waiting there. Uh, so Devata, your opening remarks, and then we'll. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank, thank you, Akram, and um, and I also welcome everybody. Like, uh, good to see everybody on the panel. Um, I'm sure it will be a good learning experience for all of us. Um, so, so we have been um, uh, at some point we have been doing waste management and different kinds of plastic thing for it's been almost nine, eight, nine years. And we have been playing multi multiple hats, I would say, all this year. So, so for example, uh, right now we are recycling um, plastics ourselves. We are a recycler, but we are also one of those producer responsibility organizations who have been working with different brands and organizations uh, for their EPR responsibility targets. Uh, we also work with municipalities as well as the informal waste markets in India. 
so um so from my experience i can definitely tell that in the last 4 5 years we are going through a huge transformation um uh, towards recycling uh beat the policies which are coming in uh, the the plastic waste management rules the solid waste management rules 2016 or beat uh, the infrastructures that i see that the facilities uh, that the municipal bodies and the urban local bodies are developing um so how things were and how things developed in the last few years i see there is a huge transformation um so but i'll also like to bring focus to a point that often it seems that before we were not doing recycling much uh but that's not true uh, india historically has been one of the countries um, who has been recycling a lot actually especially plastics when we look at pet bottles or shampoo bottles rigid plastics with the like the hard plastics uh, our recycling rates are as good as 70 80% it's probably better than many of the european and the american countries that we aspire uh, like to become like um, how good their waste management is like probably our recycling rates have been already been exceeding that and uh, all of the credit actually goes um, to the informal waste markets in india uh, we have very intermingled uh, collection chains of waste pickers scrap dealers and informal recyclers whom we call also invisible environmentalists um, you know, because of the fact they are driving the recycling industry alive uh, but being invisible there is also lots of negativities around that regarding how they will treat the workers how they will dispose the effluents or how um, you know, things will be done so many times this recycling that we do are not reported out there uh, but but there is also a movement in india there are a series of some organizations who are working to improve their quality of work and we can see also the policies slowly talking starting to talk and address them but i think uh, when we we are still have a long way to go in a in a way how do we integrate them as part of the solutions as an organization we are attempting our uh, contributing a little efforts towards that and uh, trying to do whatever we can by integrating this uh, so so i can tell like uh, right now plastic recycling collection recovery everything is very exciting where all different stakeholders right from the informal markets to the brands and manufacturers the municipal bodies the policy makers are interacting and i see a panel uh, which represents a lot of them don't not the informal markets though uh, but um, i think like this would be a good conversation i'll take a lot and um, and looking forward how it goes thank you thank you so much uh, devathu for sharing your uh, intro i will uh, i want to also have a small remarks from dr shekhar before i go to shalini ma'am and then saloni ma'am to give the uh, you know the address dr shekhar uh, he has been mentoring us guiding us one of the leading policy influencer uh, has been working since last three decades uh, in this space of policy making and development dr shikhar a very brief remarks and then maybe you can come later perfect thank you thank you, thank you akram very nice to see a real good user policy maker and as well as an international representative uh, pl- plastics is something see the more we get advanced more problems come and so that you know we have to balance between the two uh, at one stage a milk bottle used to come from and then used to get recycled and milk bottle will go back and come back go back come back there no uh, pollution except when the bottle breaks then plastics came it had its own uh, initial uh, problems where we didn't have good plastic where then plastics really became the most advanced industry so much so that finally plastic became even cheaper than water cheaper statement which is there now water is more packaged only thing which is lacking is our in, we to ensure that it is recycled back it is the only thing which we are lacking and there of course government needs to put a break on it because we cannot just keep on polluting the atmosphere so plastics is to be uh, you know even if government says okay unless the plastic come back you cannot give the next set just like milk bottle plastic will come back you know it's all question of how we formulate at the same time educate every uh, housing complex have every houses that yes plastics keep it separate because however good it is for us it creates nuisance for the whole uh, uh, economy so it is something which so many of you are there and we are all going to hear 
and like Akram said that you know we are I am working on a system by which to make India the global soft superpower. And if plastics is going to pollute us, we can never be a superpower. Not superpower from the nuclear and defense point of view. I am talking of superpower as a knowledge and you know teaching a learning point of view. So maybe with that I will keep myself pressing. Uh, and please let let us hear from the uh, real experts on the ground and see how well we can go forward. Because a very very important thing from economic point of view, from the growth point of view, and from our own knowledge and leadership point of view. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shekhar. Now we come to the main part uh, of the program, and we have four, uh, five important speakers actually back to back. So we will hear them out. Uh, Mrs. Shalini Valla is the MD of uh, one of the most now uh, relevant and important organization, uh, ICCE, International Council for Circular Economy. She is the one who is actually advocating of the concept of circular economy from the very intellectual dimension and also engaging the academia very, very uh, aggressively and uh, seriously. So we will hear from her actually what circular economy means. Because circular economy is something which we all talk about and often we, we associate it with uh, either brands or their process or with recyclers. Like we, we some, sometimes equate circular economy means recycling. What exactly circular economy is? What kind of you know changes or transitions you are observing, and how you are seeing the international best practices coming, and uh, you know we, we are adapting uh, back to back. We are achieving a lot of policy papers, uh, policy reports. So in which direction actually we are going towards achieving a circular economy in India? So Miss uh, Mrs. Shalini Valla. Thank you, Akram. Thank you very much. I would like to extend my gratitude to Ms. Salone Goel, Honorable Padam Sri Rajagopalan Vasudevan, sir, my co panelists Dr. Shekhar, Dr. Rai, Mohamed Shamanji, Mr. Rath, Michael, and all the other audience here. Uh, when you talk about secularity, Akram, one point that I would like to begin with is something that uh, right now we are actually challenging in India. And that is that most of the people, especially industry, confuses circularity with recycling. And this is one major challenge that I see uh, also uh, kind of banging the doors of the policymakers. And that is what we need to understand that circularity does not come at the end of life cycle, but circularity starts at the design phase itself. So it is about how we design the product. And right from the design phase, we built in the uh, the repair, the, re the remanufacturing processes within the component and the material so that more of it is the life cycle of the product is elongated. And uh, also there is repairability, which is built in, not like the obsolescence models we see in the current industry. So circularity, yes, I think it is starting. To, we all are speaking about it. We all are talking about it. Uh, Niti Aayog had uh, set up 11 subcommittees for circularity. And uh, I was a part of most of these committees and I was seeing how we are working. And I hope that these uh, strategies come up helpful and handy for the industry to make this transition from linear to a circular-based model. Uh, EPR has its own role to play. And as we all know that uh, EPR is an uh, environmental policy approach under which the responsibility of the producer for their products is extended to include the social cost of the waste management, including the environmental impact and waste disposal. When we compare this with the conventional waste management practices, EPR involves the collection of particular end of life products uh, and the categories or waste streams. In some cases, these waste would traditionally be handled inappropriately through the municipal waste management programs and packaging is definitely one of them, and that is what we see in India as well. In other cases, they might be handled or might be needed to be handled as special waste, which would be inappropriate for a municipal waste program. Some solvents, scrap tires, uh, crankcase oil, lead acid batteries, electronic equipments fit into very well into this category. To evaluate the cost and benefit ratio for the EPR programs, the cost of these fees needs to be weighed against the benefits of the 
term of the social cost of waste management, which also should include various externalities associated with landfilling and incineration or the environmental risk associated with existing practices. And when we compare this to the alternative policy instruments, uh, EPR sees an attraction and incentivizes the producers to consider post-consumer waste costs when making decisions about product design and marketing. Uh, such design for environment incentives are important, I would say, um, and they play a very important role in the overall assessment of EPR uh, and their practical evaluation could be sometimes difficult. There needs to be a more, uh, more of such post-evaluation programs. I was going through a report of OECD. It's, a, it's an old report, uh, but what it does is evaluating the economic instruments for environmental policy drew which attention, which drew attention to the need of more exposed evidence on the performance of the economic instruments in practice. So today, while India is now employing or thinking of employing innovative approaches in the environmental policy, including environmental taxes, emission tradings, voluntary approaches, EPR, uh, there are still relatively few systematic evaluation studies for the practical experiences. More extensive evaluation evidence would, uh, would have a number of benefits. I think. So these benefits could involve the evaluation evidence on the performance of policy instruments that could help improve the administration of the current policy and can contribute to a process of policy repressal, modification and improvement in the light of experience. Evaluations can also improve the choice of instruments in future policy making by demonstrating how different instruments perform in specific contexts. Countries may be able to learn from the practical experience of policy approaches which would be adopted elsewhere. Evaluation may also contribute to better communication with stakeholders and the policy about purpose, operation, and effects of the entire policy. Evaluation studies can contribute to better design and implementation of the environmental policies in India as well. Uh, today, the EPR in India is applicable to plastic and e-waste, but sooner we uh, envisage that it will be applied to other sectors as well. We have an expert here today, so ma'am will be able to uh, highlight more about that. Uh, new models are being worked out as we discussed. The uniform framework of EPR by the MOFCC, which came in July last year, states that the single model on EPR may not work for the entire country like India. They have also prescribed some other models like the fee-based model, pro-based model, execution by the PI bonds, and the plastic credit-based model. These could be another kind of models that would evolve along with EPR. Uh, for circularity, the digitization of entire supply chain of pre and post consumer waste is an important aspect. And this would help to tackle the problem of waste as well as make EPR a success. Uh, the latest gadget that someone was referring to for me on the panel uh, by MOEFCC, which was dated 6th October, states that PI uh, shall have to provide the details of recycling certificate only from the recycled, uh, registered recyclers, along with the details of the uh, quantity sent. Uh, for the end of life disposal and filling annual returns on the online field. Now these certificates are subject to verification by the regulatory bodies as they say. So uh, I believe digitally connecting all the stakeholders will open up opportunity for the industry collaboration and partnerships. And many such examples of industry collaborations have resulted in implementing robust waste segregation, collection and disposal. Uh, adoption of technologies, on the other hand, development of digital solutions, uh, new business models will create new growth opportunities in the global smart waste management industry. I think uh, this is all my view about the plastic waste management, the EPR, and with this, I would like to thank Policy Time, my co-panelists and the delegates for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shalaniji, for sharing your uh, very rich experience, uh, you know, working with different uh, organizations, stakeholders in the field of, uh, you know, uh, circularity. Uh, now I will come to our uh, chief guest, uh, Sarani Goel, ma'am, who has been extremely kind and, and uh, grateful to be a part of our two programs. Now, I also was lucky to have a physical meeting with her today in our office where uh, she guided us extensively on how sustainability can be taken uh, forward with, with much more aggressive plans and actions. Now, Shalini Mam, uh, Saloni Mam is actually 
also very very deeply involved uh, in the in the in the climate change and and sustainability process i will request ma'am ma'am we are also seeing a lot of disruption in the policy space and also in the entire economic space so whether it is disruption in the forms of technology in the forms of uh, you know foreign uh, collaboration integration uh, and uh, a lot of other new you know phenomena coming into the picture now in the sustainability sphere uh, india is taking very aggressive policies in different fields sustainability is not an exception how do you see ma'am we are taking actions towards making uh, a better policy also a better implementation road map uh, to make india truly sustainable and a role model for the world thank you akram and uh, my gratitude to the policy times led by you for repeatedly organ creating platforms where um, where policy makers uh um, industry people researchers actual on ground implementation people are coming on board a single platform and sharing their experiences their learnings and informing each other to strengthen each other's arms and i think that is where the crux of it all lies is that circularity by its very nature cannot be done by a single person this has to be it's circular everybody in that link or in that chain has to contribute and make the whole chain stronger any the chain is as strong as its weakest link so the beauty of these platforms that you are creating is that you are helping each link in the chain to get stronger and um, not only by learning from each other getting information as well as getting inspired by each other so i must thank you for this i am also um, very humbled today to be sharing this platform with padmashri vasudevan ji and uh, with ms bhalla she she is clearly very deeply um, engaged with the subject and that was evident from her from her insights uh, mr rada i would i'm again uh, glad to be here on this platform with you along with the industry speakers i know mr rat was with me in another of your talks and he also has um, how should i say implementation insights and um, uh, mr rat your uh, your vision or your um, intervention using digitization for facilitating or for enabling this entire process of circularity is is going to be the way forward <clears throat> perhaps as the most cost effective way of doing this work as you move forward so as as it was, as was mentioned that and i keep saying that india is a natural recycler we we the raddiwala is a part of our homes the raddiwala is a part of our lives the raddiwala is a part of the way we think about waste and why we think about waste as a resource though in a very limited way and as ms bhalla rightly said that recycling is only one of the things circularity is a much broader approach to the whole subject of um, waste management or looking at waste as a resource and not just as waste so um, we understand that circularity has to be is the way forward for us and uh, we have a very clear mandate and from the swachh bharat mission we have a clear mandate mandate when our honorable prime minister declared a very ambitious target for a single use plastic phase out um india is also leading the world on sdg implementation and um, there are multiple sdg goals that waste management and i think somewhere in that circularity overlaps with so we have the clean water the sdg goal 6 on clean water and sanitation goal 11 on sustainable cities and consumption we have sdg 12 on responsible consumption and production of course climate change sdg 30 as well as sdg 14 for life below water this is specifically with respect to plastic waste so um, also we see circularity and as one of the um, levers for green jobs for green growth as well as for better climate management for greater climate action for india um of course in the with respect to climate action india is one of the leading countries in the world we have declared a very ambitious target for renewables 450 gigawatts we have um, we have a clear policy for adoption and uh, for deepening embedding of electronic vehicles we have um, several sectors making a transition to electrification and most recently circularity 
and the vehicle scrappage policy has also uh, been enunciated for the purpose of uh, improving circularity or providing a clear mandate for circularity, but also bringing it within the mandate of climate action for the country. So I will just broadly um, run all you um, all the uh, and the uh, speakers and the audience here. And you will notice that there is a trend that is happening in the policy mandate, or rather the regulatory mandate on plastics. So it started with the municipal solid waste management rules and back way back in, and then we came with the plastic waste management rules in 2016, which were later amended in 2018. So um, this was really an expression that plastic waste management requires a separate set of rules and simply um, mentioning them within the larger mandate of the municipal solid waste management rule is now insufficient. Plastics now need to be looked at individually as a separate category of waste and with, uh, with, um, with solutions or with regulations that are unique to that context. So um, the 2016 rules after its amendment in 2018 talk about a clear mandate for recycling, a mandate for encouraging use in, of plastic waste in road construction, waste to energy, waste to, waste to oil. But these are all downcycling of plastic waste. We are also now looking at upcycling of plastic waste, which is also an important consideration going forward. So the rules, plastic waste management rules, interestingly, um, gave the responsibility of plastic waste management to the waste generator which is actually a very important um, lever for more effective implementation of the rules. Uh, this, this gets strengthened further in the, uh, in the EPR. Uh, then the, uh, it also talked about bringing on board bulk and institutional generators of plastic waste, requiring them to segregate waste at source and then hand it over to an authorized recycler. And of course, the rules introduced the uh, uh, the producer, the importer, and the brand owners, and the recycler into the EPR framework. Interestingly, the plastic waste management rules also talked about the um, labeling of plastic waste. Now, for people who are working in this sector, segregation at source critically links to better information for the people who are generating waste. So, labeling is one such step, one step in that direction. So, it not only helps to inform the user about how to dispose of waste, but it also informs the recycler or um, the aggregator or the uh, secondary recycler, uh, sorry, secondary uh, segregator on how to uh, segregate it into different categories. So segregated waste can reach the recycler and waste recycling can be done in the most cost-effective and efficient way. Now this was followed by the Plastic Waste Management Rules 2021, which have in um, brought a regulatory mandate on uh, phasing out of single-use plastics. The, the 2021 rules clearly identifies which single-use plastics are to be phased out by, uh, by, 20, by July 2022. It also talks about um, the thickness of bags, the carry bags, as well as uh, the minimum thickness, as well as the uh, non-woven plastic bags. Um, now, of late, I mean, the most latest development in this trend has been the uh, and the uh, issuing of the draft EPR rules. And um, it's interesting that the draft EPR rules, so um, actually EPR um, brings, uh, takes care of a market uh, market anomaly. It, in, it internalizes a market of externality. So an environment externality, it brings into the, it internalizes it. And therefore in the whole process, it, it places the responsibility for better plastic waste management in the hands of the people who are generating the product. And then in that case, I think that is where the whole story about circularity comes in and how Ms. Bhalla had said that circle, when we talk about, so all these rules are now actually in some ways strengthening the mandate for circularity, we can see that trend. So, but when we look about circularity, then it is really about looking at each link in the plastic waste value chain. And that now, and we're not even looking at it as a plastic waste value chain because that perhaps is a linear chain. 
circularity talks about closing the chain closing the loop and bringing the way, the end of the cycle um, end of life cycle product back into the into the usability loop so um, uh, when we uh, so if you look at each link in the plastic waste value chain so the first stage where we need to do action and i am hoping that this uh, that these mandates um, with um, the plastic waste management rules as well as the epr guidelines whenever they are finalized the regulation whenever they are finalized they will all strengthen and push or cause a ripple in the entire plastic waste value chain starting from the stage of designing better products and packaging which have plastics so this will this entire exercise will assist source segregation as well as recycling as i had mentioned earlier labeling is important but just as important is designing a, more, a product which allows recycling which allows segregation and then subsequently recycling and when i talk about segregation ideally segregation of source so the next stage of course is the manufacturer stage i think the epr mandate brings the manufacturer into the whole into the whole uh, or i would say nudges or pushes the manufacturer now to think about how it would how they would want to um produce and how they would want to push their products into the market and how they would take responsibility for the waste or the uh, the waste from their products then we have of course the consumer it's a crucial link um somewhere epr and the mandate that the epr is creating will will push all stakeholders to create greater awareness and greater sensitization of the consumer the consumer must understand that better environmental better waste management better plastic waste management or better in environment management is his strength in the sense of his health in terms of aesthetics so that the um, this whole process should actually now push um all stakeholders to now work closely with even the consumer to create greater sensitization amongst the consumer so that they are able to adopt better more responsible behavior with respect to consumption as well as waste disposal we have of course a waste collector that has been raised that we need to bring the waste collector we need to empower them we need to institutionalize them we need to bring them into a uh, into a more formal waste management system so that there is not only a greater accountability for the waste that is getting created or it is getting leaking into the system but there is also there is more dignity of work in this uh, for the waste for the uh, for the waste collectors who are at this point of time typically marginalized people in the entire in the entire plastic value chain and then of course the responsibility of the aggregator and the recycler i think there in lies the importance of creating a business case for the recycler as well as the ag aggregator or rather i would say strengthen the business case for the aggregator and the recycler so that um uh, if, so that the regulation so that the recycler is able to is incentivized to more get more active and more embedded in the system and not just be guided by a regulation so i think that is where the uh, that is where the strength of the uh, of the effectiveness of this reg these regulations will lie i think going forward as i had mentioned data is going to be an important part digitization is going to be an important part and looking at viability for the entire circularity principle is going to be absolutely crucial for how for how these regulations or how policies are going to roll out in future and your suggestions in this respect will be most welcome thank you thank you thank you so much ma'am for very nicely articulating the whole concept of epr and and the also historically developing the past plastic policies that india has adopted and also giving a complete different dimension uh, in terms of setting the vision or or expected outcome of the policy and regulations that india is adopting we are really grateful to you for sharing this stage and sharing your views and experience with us uh, we we i'll be very happy also if you could stay uh, with us a little longer so that uh, more points can be discussed because we have two speakers from the industry and we have one speaker from the international uh, domain sharing the global best practices and a complete different 
kind of uh, solution setups that are going to come. And before that, we have a, a warm welcome to Dr. Raja Gopalan Vasudevan, sir, uh, Dean uh, at uh, Thyagraj uh, you know, College of Engineering, Madurai. And very famously, sir, if you can unmute yourself, uh, very famously, sir, is known as Plastic Man of India. Sir uh, sees plastic as a miracle and uh, plastic as a blessings. Now, how we actually adapt and, and accept this miracle, and it is already doing a miracle, and how it can be adapted in a much more sustainable manner is everything that uh, is Sir's vision. So, I would request uh, Dr. Vasudevan to kindly share your... I don't, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to start and how to start, actually. Well, I, I just joined in the middle. I don't know where we are, but still there. Uh, from the from the uh, understanding of the, uh, this one, uh, you are talking about the policy. Uh, policy is only for the betterment of the public. Policy for the betterment of the existence. Policy for the betterment of utilization. So let us uh, try to know about the plastic better than uh, thinking about the plastic policy. I, that is how, the, because I'm, I'm giving a series of lectures and going on. I could see different types of people. Let us know plastic is, first of all, plastic is very important. So very, that it has, it has come at a very important time when exploitation of nature was going on in terms of wood, in terms of so many things. It has substituted wood, metal, etc. Therefore, plastic is a very important material and it has become part and parcel of our life. Therefore, it is, we are using the plastic. And now the problem is how we are, how the plastic is giving a problem. Problem, how can a plastic give a problem? That is my question. Basic question is plastic is not a poisonous material. Poisonous cannot give a problem. The problem is only by the human being who is not dispersing properly, who is creating garbage, bad garbage culture, and it is because he throws a different direction, and that, and uh, because of he doesn't understand the potentiality of the plastic, he is not able to find a use, and you try to find out different policy to suit his wrong understanding. Therefore, I say, first of all, I would like to say, please understand the importance of plastic. And we must, we can't say no to the plastic. Plastic is poor man's friend. You say SUP. SUP is a very important material for the poor man's friend. It is for every existence. If you, village, if you go to visit a village, there they hunt, they have the uh, plastic chair, plastic bucket, plastic bag, uh, carry bag, everything. That's what they're living. Their business is going on more than plastic bag. So understand the potentiality and uses on one side. On the other side, how this is used after that. Today, I, I, just, I have just now given a lecture. We need 200 lakh tons of single-use plastic for Indian road alone. I need 200 lakh tons of single-use plastic for Indian road alone. And for constructing the toilet in India, one crore, I need another 200 lakh tons of plastic. Where is it? 400 lakh tons of single-use plastic I need. Where is it? We don't have even 10 lakhs. Therefore, plastic is useful. Why you, when, why you have a policy for banning that? I, that's why I say not to ban, but to plan. Planning is a policy is only for planning. How to collect the plastic? Because of the culture, it at every stage, if the, the manufacturer, the manufacturer, market in forget it. They never bother about it. They, it is their responsibility. After disposal, after using payback system, now there are many methods by which they can collect back. And it is a responsibility of the manufacturer to see to see where it is, how it is, how to distribute. The policy should be should be in such a way. And we, the people, we use it. We discipline, discipline throw it in different direction. The COVID has come. The policy came immediately. Wear masks, wear maintain their distance, and so many things. People are very immediately worried. 
because when the fear comes ever in there that was here also fear impose some policy matter where if fear concept can be brought up so the plastic is separated properly and it can be used effectively and the government of course it is it is very positive in the 2016 policy it is very positive implementation the people who are implementing the technology they are not doing it properly that for the policy now to understand the reality and policy should come that for i i repeatedly say the problem is human word man made policy carelessness and carelessness of the human being made all the problem and plastic is going to come it is it is with this with you and in every form it may be on the ball point when on table it may be a cell on your table it may be a table top on your table or it is that different form no problem but uh, today we are talking about uh, carry bag after some time we we'll talk about chair after some you don't go and talk about that no we can we there is a solution therefore say no waste is created by god my my policy is different anything created by god is always positive man cannot create of his own so when it is available it is properly understood i i just want to mention one policy you say 50 micra from that you go to 120 micra what is it why you see what i require is this uh, single use plastic in large quantity why well, one kilometer one uh, single line i need one ton of plastic means 10 lakh carry bag Ten days carry bags can be used in a one kilometer road. If it is twenty micrograms or thirty micrograms, if it is five five hundred micrograms, fifty micrograms, one hundred micrograms, I have to use less. More plastic is available. You are using you are see when the thickness increases, consumption of plastic increases. When you say you say reduce, reuse, etc., but you are going on increase from twenty micrograms to fifty micrograms, fifty micrograms, one to one to one. That was the consumption increases. And how are so you say by plastic is not decomposable? But you say increasing the the material and which is not used. I say decomposability is a virtue of plastic. That's why I am able to use it for road. I am able to use it for construction. For all the use, I don't have enough plastic. The plastic is available. It's only just for ten percent of what is used. Therefore, I say plastic is useful. Plastic should be understood properly. The use of plastic in different direction is useful. The the manufacturers they have the uh, CSR, EPR. They can use all those effectively, but their responsibility, their payback system is there. and the society should be properly gained want the community people the community holders everything to properly governed and governed also to that so that they collect it separate and give it to the market so you don't simply throw it you should not throw it so and then government should come forward and the government is after who is government some of our people only is there let them understand the importance and do the work therefore the mumbai plastic is not the problem mm-hmm. let us have that one in the base that that is our problem it is we the we the people are the problem let us understand let us find out the policy to regulate ourselves so that we collect the plastic properly and effectively use it this is the introduction talk i can give thank you thank you so much sir you are always uh, very <laughs> aggressive and bold in your words and your state i'm truthful also i'm not bold i'm truthful truthful yeah <laughs> thank you thank you so much and, and government is making such policies actually what all you are saying to achieve those so all the policies and all the efforts from the government side is only to achieve it the problem is it's about the collection of it you know it's not about the uh, you know all this uh, nitty gritty it is about how do we collect those and uh, place it to the right spot if we can do this i think half of the problem is sorted out so we will we will discuss further on this and uh, you know very nice suggestions came uh, out of you i will now go to two of our indian brands before i go to michael i wanted to have some views from indian companies uh, who are doing excellent practices uh, and and abiding by the policies adopted by our government so may i have uh, mr mohammed shamim khan and and um, dr vipin ray if you are here may i request you to kindly ji uh, mr shamim khan represents uh, bharat ka ek uh, sabse bada fmcg company और शमीम खान साहब जो प्रैक्टिस एडॉप्ट करते हैं जो जो बेसिकली प्लास्टिक रिसाइकलिंग प्रैक्टिसेस एडॉप्ट करते हैं दैट्स अ ग्लोबल एग्जांपल ऑफ इट सो व्हाट इज योर पर्सपेक्टिव आपका क्या पर्सपेक्टिव रहेगा और आप क्या किस किस तरह से ईपीआर को समझ रहे हैं और इंप्लीमेंट कर रहे हैं सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल 
I want to just uh, thank uh, Akram ji for giving me opportunity of that uh, uh, this screen to sharing the screen with the honorable uh, persons of India and uh, honorable Dr. Raja Gopalan, honorable Saloni ma'am and all. So thank you so much. And uh, as uh, I am continuously means to say in the touch with EPR and the plastic waste management rules in India and all. And uh, so as an industry person. Uh, I uh, I'm a I'm a very uh, if I'm talking about myself that I'm always uh, discussing with my employees with my uh, professionals with my colleagues and all and uh, I'm giving training to them for that and uh, in this platform I have seen uh, that everyone is um, uh, everyone is very much focused on that and uh, I agree with uh, what uh, uh, Saloni ma'am has just uh, discussed about uh, to. Incentivize the recyclers for the more uh, uh, to deliver to deliver they uh, to uh, they deliver more and uh, like uh, uh, Raja Gopalan sir has told that uh, we have to be um, focused about what we are using and how we will dispose. The problem is not the plastic uses. The problem is plastic dispose. It is just like uh, if I am talking about as a layman language. Everything like if if we are if we are using a uh, sweet uh, sweetener, we are using sugar. Huh? So if we are using and we thought that how my body will decompose it, then it will be beneficial to me and it is very much means to say um, a part of my life. But if I will take it drastically without thinking anything, without without thinking that how it will be disposed, then it will become an illness. So we have to be focused about. what we are using which kind of plastic we are using and what is my agenda to dispose all the plastics by end of my process i have to identify my uh, my uh, plastic product what i am using and uh, if i am talking if i am talking about the plastic that in every industries we have to be focused that what uh, the new epr and what the government is uh, means to say uh, sensitizing us that not using less than 60 microns of single use plastic especially single use plastic avoid single use plastic which is less than 60 microns which is very very much means to say critical to decompose and the second part what saloni ma'am has just told that uh, the segregation from the source we we need to we need to take it we need to take it very seriously that we have to segregate where we are using where it is becoming a waste when it is a part of process then it's okay when it becomes waste it has to be segregated recently i have seen one of the uh, telefilm that safai bar which is also focused that um, uh, and all now where the um, uh, our um, uh, national safety council director is uh, avnish mr avnish uh, has uh, dr avnish has just uh, released uh, i i i means i am uh, here uh, just uh, recent one two days i have just seen that so it is also on focus of that so what as a industry person what i will just uh, told that the segregation recycling and send it to the authorized recycler who is author, who is recycling in a uh, in a in a in a manner of uh, reusable or in a in a manner of uh, uses as a fuel like uh, i'm i'm just um, um, read in the um, the new uh, draft of the plastic waste management uh, where the cement, it has to be used in a cement industry as a fuel so these 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 all things we have to be focused and uh, what i uh, i suggest that we have to, uh, recently we have, we have we have seen that uh, the maximum uh, single use plastic users are converting themselves to the biodegradable materials like uh, some of the um, uh some of uh, uh, the telemarketing uh, companies are delivering their couriers in uh, paper bags earlier they are using single use plastic or the very thin plastic they are using but now they are converting themselves to uh, the uh, biodegradable materials like uh, in uh, in market you will see that uh, if if you will just compare before and after 2 uh, 3 years back then in market you will uh, just found uh, Uh, the disposable spoon forks made up of the plastics now mm. now it is converted to the um, uh, the wooden material the the waste of the uh, sugar cane and all so these all the transformation is continuously going on 
transformation is going on we have to keep the momentum up for taking seriously what the plastic we are using and how we will decompose how we will recycle it this is the overall end to end what i think and uh, i hope so uh, all the industries are continuously focusing on that and uh, no doubt uh, our mentors our government is also uh, focusing to achieve more and the target agenda what i have just seen that uh, the target of 2024 20, 25 we will achieve 80% of the plastic waste recycling thank you thank you so much uh, for for very uh, nicely again shortly briefing the entire thing and you you talked about a couple of stakeholders uh, which are very important in the entire process where you also emphasize the relevance of recyclers i will go to quickly to dr bipin ray before i come to uh, michael michael because i want you to give the global perspective you know complete closing remarks uh, kind of global perspective and solutions because i know uh, you will be focusing on the solutions and a completely different kind of waste management practices so before that uh, let me uh, hear from dr bipin kumar ray who is the ehs head of uh, continental tires now tire is a segment which is not yet under the pr what i understand from uh, mr ray so mr ray your perspective on how recycling in one of your important sector and and i was very interested to know from uh, dr vasudevan how tire can be used in building roads and other things you know ah can i can i add the tires i am converting into modified bitumen the tires can be used as a modified bitumen and the, the bitumen is very much improved and the quality of the bitumen improved and we can use it for road day <laughs> excellent adu but follow me the, the tire the tire is uh, powder it is powdered and the powder is uh, taken because the powder can the tire contain lot of uh, alpha tin material also and organic material also it very well mixes with the plastic also it is very important so i am able to mix plastic and the tire powder and the uh, therefore making a bitumen on one side and mixing with the road and this road becomes more successful also so again there is another important work going on my lab i see that is interesting to hear from uh, dr ray your comment yeah. uh thank you so much mr akram for inviting me uh on this platform and it is really a great opportunity to listen the eminent experts here uh and sharing my thoughts uh see uh, when it comes to um, the plastic waste management or epr uh in the plants what we understand is for example if i take my tire industry yes tire what sir says is a uh, crumb rubber what we call is and it is very useful and uh, there is very easy way to recycle the tire uh, and uh, in the industry it's well established uh, if we look into other countries yes in our country right now uh, we don't have a policy uh, where as a manufacturer we are responsible for taking our uh, products when the tire comes out of wheel uh to ensure that they are safe and of life disposal uh, but yet there are a lot of pyrolysis of tire which happens in an organized sector and uh, obviously that's are leading to the environmental pollution also uh, but this is something which i have understood i understand that uh, government is working and maybe in the coming years uh, the tire will also come under the epr framework and there is a legal uh, binding for the tire manufacturers also to take back the tire tires after the their useful life period and ensuring the responsibility of uh, uh, eco friendly disposal of the tire but as such when we are speaking about the plastic waste uh, what looks to me is uh, that see plastic is a very important uh, stuff and that's why it is visible everywhere when this is the most visible material when you go for your interior of house there also you are using so many plastics and it's very cheap and uh, and uh, even in the manufacturing it's easy to set up a manufacturing facility for developing and for producing uh, plastic products and that's the reason it looks everywhere and when i say everywhere it's also create a problem and the problem is not because uh, uh, plastic as such but the problem is as uh, dr rajgopalan said is basically how we dispose it off and uh, since we have never care we only care things till it is of our use uh, and uh, whether it's a corporate 
or a, as a customer like me, we care only until the product is of our use. Once it becomes useless, then it's simply throw. And uh, that's the reason this plastics becomes a problem. And mostly because of it's a very good packaging uh, stuff. And that's why it is comes in our house uh, every time as a packaging material and goes into the dustbin and then it gets as a trash. And the basic problem which we have faced with plastics is uh, in seabirds, 19% of the guts of the seabirds are uh, filled with plastics. So it's a real problem. And we, as a human being, it's our moral responsibility to take care of this waste. And uh, the government has come up with uh, certain rules, regulations uh, with respect to solid waste management and plastic waste management. It's good. But at the same time, we have to think about the entire ecosystem. That's the very uh, much required uh, for the implementation of these rules. Uh, Otherwise, uh, today we have banned on 50 microns, uh, less than 50 microns of plastic. But when you go to the vegetable market or a, a Kirana store, you will find these plastic bags. They are readily available and are in practice, uh, which is not good. And moreover, when people say that uh, make it from 50 to 120 microns, uh, I can understand if it's a thick, if it is a good quality, we will be certainly using those bags multiple times. But if we are want to use those bags multiple times, then why not with my jute bags? Uh, so the question is uh, what I personally uh, think about all these things that the packaging content, when we speak about the packaging content, uh, there we have to understand that we have to reduce the material intensity and energy intensity of our packaging content. When we speak in broader context of environmental sustainability, we have to look into the products uh, with when we manufacture the products, when we design the products, and when we look across the packaging of the products. We have to think uh, what manner material intensity and how can we reduce the energy intensity. These are the two things. If we learn to in, uh, make the same functional value with lower material intensity and lower inter uh, energy intensity, it is you are unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is going to be more uh, eco-friendly, more sustainable, uh, and more pocket-friendly as well. So, uh, so that's the important point since where we are for the same functional value of the product. Say if I am uh, I am compelled to use 120 microns where I can use a 25 or 30 microns to package this, then for the same functional value, I am uh, wasting my resource. This planet has limited resources, fixed resources. We cannot have that kind of authority to waste. And if I have money, it didn't mean then I can package my stuff with such a fancy and if it can be packaged with say 100 grams, I use 150 grams because when I use extra, which is beyond that requirement, it's obviously wastage of resources. So we need to look at with the perspective with of material intensity and energy intensity. These two are important because ultimately in the world, kilograms and joules prevails. And kilogram and joules have to be very carefully used to achieve the functional values. Society need functional values. They don't need packaging. They don't need products. So we need to look on, uh, and that's this is the product-based economy, which has ended up us in such a situation we are where we are worrying about the climates, where we have so many problems. It's basically we have to look towards a functional value of the products, and we need to design the products to contribute the functional value to the society. So this is a major shift which is required to understand. And when we are di in, uh, discussing or when we have to address these uh, environmental issues or waste management, it's a very complex topic. And we need to engage everyone and everyone in this uh, management system. They don't have all have the same value, uh, same uh, setup of uh, skills, resources, or intellectual levels. So we have to engage everyone. And when I say everyone, our corporates also have a major role in uh, running those advertisement campaigns when they run for their products. They have to run how to dispose of the products and how to uh, and sensitize the customers also about the environmental issues which the products uh, at the end uh, creates so that we can have a 
ecosystem where the governments, the industries, and our uh, recycling uh, manufacturing setups, they all work together. And, and, for, and the good part for this country is we are doing this recycling in an unorganized way. But yes, it's very well established. The part which we need to look is uh, how we can ensure the health hazards, which our recycling workers are uh, right now uh, facing and are exposed to the hazards and uh, how we make our recycling industries more structured, more organized and more eco-friendly in processes. So they need a lot of uh, boost in terms of finance, in terms of uh, technologies and in terms of other supports. So that's all what I understand as per the extended producer responsibility concept. It's a very good concept where the manufacturers, where the generators have to take care of the products until the end of life. But at the same time, uh, because this gives uh, that, um, the, and compels or pushes the manufacturers to design the product, keeping in mind of end of life disposals issues also. So that's a very wonderful thing. But at the same time, um, we, we also have to understand it's a complex issue. Uh, just making uh, these uh, regulations, that's not going to really achieve the things. And in place of that, we have to facilitate our recycling industry uh, to uh, with the technologies, making them more eco-friendly, making them more organized, and a lot of trainings and a lot of things are required. And even we can come up with some guidelines or some regulations where corporates uh, work process to contribute their management governance expertise to these industries and making the recycling also to the next level as we are working in developing the products. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, Dr. Ray, for your very highly intellectual and, and experiential actually views and, and uh, <laughs> perspectives. Uh, from your speech, what I understood is, yes, policy times is the founding, uh, I mean, uh, policy making is the fundamental step. Without policy making, nothing is possible almost. And how after policy making, all of us, we as stakeholders, can facilitate it further to achieve the goal. Because policy making is the first step, and then we have to all together take it to the next step and next level. Now I'll come to the final speaker, uh, Michael Rada. Michael Rada is the founder of Industry 5.0. When uh, at the global level, Industry 5.0 is uh, about machine interacting with human for the first time, Michael Rada brings a complete different uh, definition and direction of Industry 5.0. And uh, let me hear, or let us hear from Michael what and how he sees that some minor changes in our uh, governance, in our the organization or in and in our family can absolutely change our waste behavior or it can save millions of dollars in terms of money as well as cost so michael over to you thank you very much for time thank you for being with you again it's a pleasure and it was pleasure to listen to all of you i have a special gift to the last speaker i think he recognized the material is generally for his company and this is inside a tire. And we have a factory here in Czech Republic and I was asked to find a way how to utilize this is the obsolete material. Few kilometers on it, very quality, high quality material. So you see uh, India is here with me and as uh, I was introduced, I really do different approach because I ask for me, for Industry 5.0, there is only one role model, is nature, and nature does not waste. So for me, I don't care whether it's plastic, wood, metal, the bad and the evil is single use. So if we will be able to eliminate single use, we will reduce significantly the volume of generated waste. And even if you have a Plastic bottle, you will find a plastic bottle in my office. Some people say you are evil. No, plastic is not evil. And I, I fully agree with the previous speaker who says plastic is value. It is. But it is my decision whether I will use this bottle only once and throw it away. Or if I fill it with water, 
and drink it again and do it again and again and again because there is nothing wrong with the bottle. Why should I crash it after a single use? No, the producer of the drink should change the way how he delivered the drink. There should be a filling station. If he would like me to drink his drink, deliver me the dr drinking station. This is nothing special. It exists in every pub, every restaurant. It's something like a filling station. So uh, for me, I have placed in a comment of this discussion, I have placed the waste prevention legislation, which I worked on for eight years. You have it there in Hindi. It's here, this one page, just one page. I need eight years to work on. And this is about waste prevention. Because if we do correctly, we do not have to pay for waste management. Consider about it. Or we reduce significantly. And we need five years to calculate how much money can be saved if we start globally to prevent waste happen. It's 475 trillion US dollar a year which when I talk with a US economist recently, he told me, Mr. Ada, you are crazy. It's eight times global GDP, how it can be. And before I was able to answer to him, he said, no, you are not crazy, you are genius. Because GDP is just the trade, but you calculate all around it. For industry 5.0 waste is not just a physical waste which ends up in a trash, but it is physical, social waste, which are people who look for meaningful work, but for some reason are not able to do it. There is urban waste. You know very well how many empty factories, building brownfields are in your cities. And at the same cities are people homeless. Why? And there is a last waste. It's a process waste. It's, it is everywhere. We waste time. We waste space. I am for 30 years in logistics. I do improve global supply chains. And did you know that at least 50% of shipping containers on international trade are carrying just the air? despite of the fact that for more than 10 years exists a collapsible container, which is certified and when empty, on one place fits six of these containers, but are not used. In Europe, in European Union, 64% of trucks are running empty. If we switch from plastic to food, Every single day in the world, there is 20, 23 million tons of crop and food thrown away every single day. 23 million tons. That's not that we do not have enough, that we have to uh, boost up our crop. No, we just have to learn not to waste it. And I am very happy that India, starting last year when I delivered similar keynote on the CE conference, generally India stepped into the age of industry 5.0. The reason why, because you in India, your businesses, your people know very well and remember very well the history of your country, of your nation, the history in which waste and wasting was not omnipresent. And this is very important. So right now it is only about considering how to get this old knowledge into your new legislation. I will not concentrate on waste. I will concentrate on waste prevention. And please do understand if you called waste if you called waste a treasure, your mind will never let you to produce less waste. Because it looks like 
that you generally reduce the money in your pocket, but that's not true. In Czech Republic, the official agency and the government says we are recycling with 92% rate. It's a lie. Sorry, it's a lie. On a global scale, it's a lie. If it will not be a lie, then the Chinese ban of importing plastic will do nothing to the world. But if you look around you, you see what it does. And I predicted 14 days after the Chinese president announced this ban, I predicted what happened, and this happened. So the issue is, let's learn how to prevent waste happen. And what is great about it, comparing to circular economy, you don't have to invest anything. No. Maybe your time, but if you look at the legislation, you recognize that the, legis the waste legislation was written by waste industry, the third most profitable industry in the world. Here is my business card. It, if we are in a one room, I hand it over to you, you take it, everything is fine. But just now, please forget about it. And we came to, we meet again, and there is a garbage bin, and I fall down, and the business card fall in a garbage bin, which is new, empty, nothing inside, except of the garbage, of the visit card. You would like to have the business card, so you ask me, please take it out. It's clean, so I take it out. I apologize with you again, and if I hand it to you and you take it from me in Czech Republic, this business card may cost you 20,000 US dollars in a penalty which you will pay because you took waste from me and you have not the right to do it. I have it. So how this happened? If you consider, here is the edge of the garbage bin, okay? Here is the business card. The law says, among others, waste is something which is located on a location dedicated to waste storage. And right now, look how it works. Here is a business card, a product, a value. Here is a waste. It's a cost. You see, nothing happened with this business card. And still, it turned from a product to waste. How you prevent waste happen? Just stretch your hand and catch in the middle air. Cut the process between product become waste. I'm doing it for eight years. I have stopped myself one million metric tons of products and material to become waste. And I did it in an environment where the waste companies told me when I started, Mr. Rada, you will never be able to prevent even one kilo of products becoming waste in an industrial environment. Today, it's 1 million tons. I have Industry 5.0 ambassadors in 74 countries. The very first one was assigned in India on October 14th. So in a few days, he will celebrate one year anniversary. It's Shivrao Chala and 3R Zero Waste Company. But I have 73 others. I dedicate my speech to United Nations to European Commission who integrate Industry 5.0 in European Sustainable Development Framework. And you see how easy it is to prevent waste happen. Just stretch your hand. Trust me, it's not so easy. It's easy to understand it right now, but if you speak about the size and industries and so on, it's not so easy. But you see, stretching the hand does not cost you anything. It is just a way how you change the mindset, and Industry 5.0 is doing that. Changing the mindset of people and businesses from wasteful to wasteless. And I am really looking forward to work with all of you together on the implementation. And especially I see teachers, education, people of media, people in businesses, Let's do it together. Let's bring this level 
to the government of India. And I know that your prime minister and the government, you has been the first in the world who has project called 100 smart cities. You are the one who has the clean cities and so on. Clean India is the aim of 3R0 way. So I know you would like to be, and this must be the part of a nation which will become a leader, not only on, in Asia, no, a global leader in sustainability. So I would be really happy to be there and I am happy I get a chance to, to speak with you through the camera and let's stay in touch. I'm on LinkedIn, let's discuss. I do workshops online, I do webinars, I do implement even online. It's not so easy, but we can do it. And we can do it and we will do it. I know it because none of us would like to leave behind a landfill but a planet on which our children and their children do not have to carry a, a, a face mask on because it must be the pl blue planet again. And this is our target to achieve. It. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I will request Dr. Shekhar now to quickly have a two minutes closing remarks from all speakers. Thank you, Michael, for such an interesting live demo from almost uh, 4,000 miles away. And it's also nice that, you know, we are all talking of uh, plastic from a very, very different dimension. We got uh, Dr. Vasudevan, who has got full technology specialist. We got Saloni on the policy matter from the Niti Aayog and uh, government side. And we have got actual implementers from various aspects. But we see plastics, again, we have to see from multi-dimensional angle. It is a knife. When a knife cuts a vegetable, it is an asset. When, when we are cutting a vegetable, it cuts the hand. It becomes a big liability. Then can we throw the knife away? That it cut my hand while cutting the vegetable. Cut, knife is not coming to cut your hand. Knife was only to cut the vegetable. But we cut our hand. <laughs> Same way, plastics are there to help us. Plastics are there to this. Where we have made a mistake is we have made plastic an immortal at the element. You know, there was a time 30 years back when plastic became more and more technologically advanced. You know, advertisements started coming. Oh, this plastic will work for 200 years, which was a big, you know, which was a suicide <laughs> for plastic by making something which is 200 years. Like you all rightly said, nature has created everything on a cyclic basis. You know, we as even as human beings, I don't know how many of us will be there next year, next decade, next two decades later. Everyone are there to grow. It creates a um, you know vegetable. It creates anything. It goes. It creates water. Water goes up, comes down. Whereas we cannot create plastic which is two hundred years alive. <laughs> Whereas you know that has become a fix. So we have to make it uh, cyclic. With that small comment, and of course another small thing which you showed some plastic uh, card. But today we call plastic money. Plastic is fully a monetary item which is necessary for you know the economy to grow to our uh, this thing to grow. So it's a question of these conferences, which has to bring that, you know, inanimate things of take the best out of plastics and bad things out of plastic, let us remove it out of the system. Then we are safe, plastic will be the golden goose. Plastic will be the golden element in our uh, history. Now, let me uh, request uh, Madam Salani first in terms of her concluding remarks after hearing all the people. In what all ways in which, you know, it can, the plastic can be the gold. Plastic can really do justice, you know, FRP most tough material is the plastic again. It is supposed to be sometimes even tougher than metal. So how could such an item which is softer than water and which is harder than metal can be eliminated from our system? It has to come in, it has to come in positively, not cutting our hand, but cutting the vegetable. Salani, madam. Dr. Shikhar, thank you for, um, for asking me to respond to this. And I think um, this is an interesting uh, conversation coming from a variety of stakeholders, looking at the issue from a variety of perspectives. So um, if you will observe that the policy mandates that have emerged over time are not for plastics that are being used for as products 
which have multiple uses. The policy mandates have been emerging for, for plastic packaging and for single-use plastics in a very limited perspective. You will see it's straws, it is uh, plastic cutlery, plastic plates, etc. So uh, it is important even for the stakeholders to be able to make that distinction that these policy mandates, what these policy mandates are, um, the, the uh, scope of these policy mandates. Having said that, and nobody, it's difficult to deny the versatility of um, plastics. And it is also difficult to deny that plastics are a, um, are a very um, inexpensive product. And perhaps it is for this precise reason that we have seen an exponential increase in their applications. Whether it is for the use for the poor people, whether it is used in industry, whether it is used in, um, in healthcare, even for, I mean, we have evidence right in staring in our face, uh, the PPP uh, materials or items that have helped in the global um, uh, fight or say uh, against um, the COVID pandemic, has been um, have, are largely plastic products. So I think this whole conversation needs to be seen in that light. And I will re-emphasize that if we are looking to the extent that the products or packaging that are to be brought within the mandate of circularity or within the mandate of EPR, now it is really the, uh, the mandate or the regulations are really a tool to trigger various actors in the entire circularity um, uh, ecosystem to then step up and play their part to innovate, to do research, to come up with business models, to come up with partnerships, to develop and foster partnerships, for, to work with uh, uh, users, consumers, to work with the rag pickers. So I think that is where now the, um, the story really lies as far as action is concerned. And I would, uh, and I, um, and I uh, greatly hope that the message will will be constructively adopted and uh, and the stakeholders will work hard uh, will will endeavor to to um, uh, to progress in this direction thank you thank you so much madam so nice to have a good clarification now with this clarification mr akshay that as one of the basic beneficiary for such clarification uh, you know can can we look back at uh, way, way forward and how does the industry look how does uh, people like you who are uh, who are there to do immense uh, contribution in this sector, how would you look at it? Actually, just the last concluding remark, please. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Sekhar, sir. A very interesting conversation we had uh, with Mr. Radha's uh, analysis and uh, uh, Saloni Madam's uh, deliberations. As a concluding remark, uh, I will put in two uh, ways of looking at it. See, think about the poor ULB who has not created the West. The West is created by the producers of the FMCG companies. And the ULB is spending money to get out of this litter without getting paid for it. That's a poacher. So, what exactly are the new uh, policy has, what I could interpret is today, if you look at the last four years uh, background, very, uh, a lot of things were not happening on ground, a lot of things are happening on paper. Mm -hmm. That is why the prices we started at 30 rupees a kg in 2016 has gone down to 3 rupees a kg today. If you look at a very practical way of looking at how, what EPR has done in India. So, what we as a company, the way we understand and the responsibility what we are prepared to take is bring the ULDs to the part of this portal and help them get EPR incentive by selling the most medical or the best doesn't have an economic value. That is MLP, what we call it multi-layer packaging best. That's like uncle chips. Good card packages. So these are the culprits which litters everywhere, which chokes your brains, 
which uh, you know, increases heights of your landfill. So that is where we have been consciously working with ULBs and we are facilitating them so that the contractors, concessioners of ULBs can sell their material and get an EPR incentive to respective of the what do you call it, cement companies or say best to energy plants or say best to oil plants. And I think uh, Professor Vasudevan uh, has rightly said, uh, there is an uh, increased interest in ensuring use of plastic waste on uh, road construction, primarily for the services roads of NHRA have been meeting more uh, uh, officials. I mean, we already three rounds of meeting were, and uh, I was so humbled to meet personally Professor Basudevan at his residence uh, a month back in Madurai. So, what I feel, this MLP material for which uh, the ULP is not getting paid for, will be definitely very productive and can make some incentive through APR mechanism if it is diverted to the road construction companies for the rural roads. Uh, that is what is uh, going to happen. To sum up, I'll say the three things which has uh, really could happen in the new policy. One is shift the importance to the recycler with the accountability and responsibility to ensure that it is not happening on paper, it is happening daily on ground. Second is, uh, if you look at the last five years, there was no importance given or focus was not there for using recycled plastic as packaging. But now government has come out with EPR target along with a target for increasing the reused plastic use per packaging. And those are given from 2023 to 2026. And that is a very, very interesting uh, interpretation where the companies will be using more recycled packaging as happening in Western uh, countries. Third very interesting thing has happened. If you are innovative and you have put in your effort to use recycled plastic and you have completed your quota, the surplus quota you can trade to other PIQs. That has uh, not been part of last five years, but this has come in the new regulation. Wherein this will help for small companies whose total quantity is not viable for fulfillment of their EPR obligation that can be really traded from big brands to smaller brands. This is a very welcome move and I really like it. Still, the downsides, there are three points what I could understand from my under, uh, research in last three hours. One is EPR portal by CPCD is functioning for registration purpose only. It has to also facilitate uploading of EPR monthly, quarterly, half yearly, and annual report. So basically, the returns can be filed on it so that it can be a complete process which checks and balances for compliances and the uh, punitive measures what government can do. Right. 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 Last is the trade surplus uh, mechanism which is given in the circular uh, is not very clear what we do with the modus of Randa. And I believe <laughs> the modalities on which the surplus EPR quota can be traded among brands. Uh, this is what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, actually, for making it so clear. Now, let us have our highest awarded person in this uh, sector, Dr. Vasudevan. He has got solution to much of the problem, much of the, even from a global level, he stands like an icon for people to follow. And for everything, he has got a ground level solution. But there, of course, we need not talk policy matter with him. He should guide in terms of how the industry can benefit, how the people can benefit. We have got an international person like Michael sitting to take it to Europe in whatever way we can, um, we can uh, subsidize others' efforts. So, Dr. Vasudevan, if you can give yeah. Mark, in terms of you know how to make it go uh, national and okay. solution to plastic. Okay. You have to unmute, please. You have to unmute. No, no, you have to unmute, please. Yeah, See, you. already what is going on now, even in India now, two last kilometers have already been laid. All the border roads have been laid. Now, 
So this is uh, and government has given notification to all corporations here for the only plastic road will be laid and uh, the rural road 25 percent plastic road will be laid. So this is a wonderful development. If this is implemented, you need more. But for now the question is, I get more inquiry where get where to get the plastic, where to get the plastic. So it is it is in some corners. So <laughs> to be collected. So this is uh, the process to be developed. How to collect, how to supply everything. So, on one side, waste plastic is a municipal solid waste. It will be reclaimed. And that is one technology. That is actually a technology. It gives a job opportunity also. We have to work for it only. I was in Indonesia. They have quite about uh, several kilometers length of plastic. So, it was stored under the place. So, it, it is a problem. Therefore, it can very well talk, uh, uh, tackle in the, in the case of this. Number two, now I am talking about structural materials. You are plaster. Plaster is another something like a brick. Remember that brick is used for construction for all varieties. Similarly, this can be used for so many purposes. So all your plastic waste can be used if it is a, if it is less than hundred micron used for which one. And with more than that, that acts as a filler. And actually, you can you can see here. I have, a, I have this is a what this is a material which I have prepared using. Our uh, tie, ties, uh, the baby ties, and the uh, crush is used a filler, and this another material can be used. So, uh, according to me, there is a solution. Let us put the mind together. I, I won't say this is only solution. There, I say, therefore, I, I also say innovation. I don't say innovation. Indian way of doing things, something different. We have to do. We can solve the problem. Therefore, just because we are not solving the problem, we should not ban it. That's why sincere request. We can't simply because very use to the common man, he carries his fuel, fruits, flower, and other things. Therefore, this is needed. Therefore, therefore, let us understand this is, and thereby let us try to come to the level of the common man and try to understand and make their own policy, etc. And as they rightly put by, by you, plastic cannot be avoided. It has to be, it, it stays with that. Let us try to find out how we are going to solve the problem involving our mind to that. That is why I, I feel uh, that really I am very happy. I have been given a good chance to express myself in this forum. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Devan. So nice that somebody like you is there for guiding the industry. Now I'll come to uh, Mr. Bartha. You got some very, you know, very purposeful uh, ideas, purposeful thoughts. You are the one who says that India was even forerunner, which may be news to all of us, in terms of the, you know, practical use of uh, plastics. Now we would like to have a good concluding remark from you before I go to Michael. Yes, uh, thank you um, for this opportunity again. So, so I uh, I'm very happy to hear the conversations overall and see the path that we are all taking. Um, so, just uh, as a closing remarks, like while the policies are coming in, um, I think like uh, as an implementer, we have seen like how EPR policy came in three four years back, but due to lack of audits and uh, the the checking mechanisms um, we uh, like many people like who seriously wanted to do epr have faced a crisis like uh, like the support prices per kilo has crashed down over the years and it's still going down um, that the brand support uh, because there are so many people out in the industry who have cropped up who are cutting corners who are not doing the right things so while we develop these policies, uh, like how the audit mechanisms also become stronger is something uh, that um, uh, is something that I think we should keep in mind. Uh, the other part, um, like I think uh, many of us touched on the base, like how the informal markets are important, how rack pickers uh, are part of the overall supply chain. Um, so, so India has seen good movements regarding the cooperative industry. We have seen in the milk uh, industry like how Amul evolved the whole ecosystem of milk production and distribution. So I think it's also a very ripe time in India, like how this cooperative movement can be can also be looked into waste ecosystem. Um, we recently had a ministry of cooperation formed um, as the, as part of the new ministries which got formed just a few months back. So if if there can be something linked with that the waste cooperatives and the waste uh, self help groups which is there in the country and how 
as uh, informal, the collective strength of the informal workers can be used to address this. It will be also very important to see while we improve the safety and the mainstreaming of them into the overall ecosystem. And the last point I would say is um, uh, uh, it's also very important that while we're talking of recycling and collection and taking it to cement factories uh, as recyclers and collectors we are still facing a lot of problem where the cement factories yeah. are yet not paying for the waste that we actually give them or uh, or uh, the markets for recyclers are yet not mature like most of the big brands and consumers um, fmcgs have not yet started usage of recycled polymers into production of their packaging materials so how that uh, ecosystem builds up so that people who are trying to do the right way, like with the right pollution controls, with the right labor policies, can get an incentive towards um, the market rates of the end products that they make or the collected waste that they collect is also something I think which is uh, very important. But overall, I think we are definitely leaning forward and um, thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, conference as well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your short, crisp and very nice uh, thing. And of course, one thing which Dr. Vast said, which everybody should know, that now it's in municipalities and others are looking for plastics, which means the plastic and are going to the you know throat of a fish and throat of a you know animal can go to recycling and get some good development. A final remark from Michael, a short remark on how India, Europe, India, Zikotovakia, and how global we can go in this endeavor to make the globe a good place to live. Michael. Thank you for the final word, generally, what we have heard that waste or plastic is one of the, we call it on the ground resource. Like it was coal, like it was crude oil, it is plastics. And we have to behave to it like it is like so. So we should do it this on one line. And the second line should be connected to waste prevention to red reducing the waste. Because if we boosting up the consumption, we boosting the waste, and no matter whether we speak about which material we will speak, we will run out of it. So if we take it just for the electro car, like the Green Deal in Europe and so on, I will not say that electro is good, or I will not say that only electro is good, or only H2 and whatever is good, no. The balance is good. Balance between different styles. So I would like to see if India is creating, as I have heard, new ministries, let's have a ministry of waste prevention. It has nothing to do with the waste industry. It has something to do with the mindset of people. And it should become a part of overall policy to become part of education, to become part of the business policies and everything, but not as a part of the waste industry itself. The waste prevention is a mindset. And I would like to see and support India in becoming the wasteless, wasteless nation. And that will make me happy because I will meet all of you all this on this journey. So that's just a short close remark from me. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So here we have a person who says anything in waste you will convert into energy. And here is another person who says whatever way you want to bring international uh, internet aspect of it, he will get. I think Akram can. We are already running out of time. Akram, whatever way you feel should be. Thank there. you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shekhar. I wanted to have a closing remarks from uh, Mohamed Shamim Khan and uh, Dr. Bipin Ray. Maybe just one or two minutes closing remarks, and then we will close it. Uh, thank you, Akram Sab. And uh, I, everything has been just uh, cleared by all the global persons and all. So not a very uh, big thing which I have to cover. We have to. I have to just summarize it that everyone is just thinking about the uh, management of plastic waste. And uh, by, uh, like uh, Michael had just said that uh, from product to waste, there is only a airline gap that product and uh, waste so we have to just think about the minimizing uh, the we have to think about the utilization utilization of the waste in the part of uh, 
brick in part of as india is a country of hierarchy uh, sorry heritage and all so we can use the plastic waste to the manufacturing of heritage statues and all there are a lot of things are continuously going on we are thinking about the roads and all what i just said so in uh, as an industry person i have to just summarize it in a few words that uh, we have to think about what the uh, how we will tackle about the waste safely before using the plastic in industry and thank you uh, dr ray have you spoken the closing remarks uh as the uh, to me after this discussion it looks that we are moving towards a better future we are setting up the organizational measures uh, and it's very important what uh, michael told that the focus should remains and always remains on waste prevention that makes sense in both terms and then uh, when it comes to that you also need to understand how we can reduce actually what i say material intensity and energy intensity in whatever we do because we have fixed tools we have fixed kgs on this planet and we are responsible to make its optimum uses with this i uh, thank you uh, for inviting me on this platform and giving me the opportunity to listen the views of other eminent experts thanks thank you so thank you michael uh, akshara ji uh, shamim ji and uh, dr ray dr shekhar and also all our viewers who joined us today in this program saloni ma'am uh, what an honor to have her for the second time and then shalini ji also shared perspective so we will uh, every week we will come and we will bring experts from uh, the different domain to talk on different aspects of uh, you know sustainability and uh, epr strategy so on epr we will do a series of programs to take uh, the best practices views from everyone so thank you so wonderful to have you in